Are you someone that believes you have to wait two weeks after you pour your candle before you do any testing or burning? Or are you the opposite? Insisting to everyone, it doesn't matter if you wait two weeks or two days after you pour, the candle's gonna behave the same way. Today we're gonna talk about candle curing, what it is, how it works, and we'll answer the ultimate question, does it even matter? So to understand exactly what the impact of curing is on your candle's performance, we really should define it. And the first part of that is cooling. And that's the act of the candle coming down from a liquid and becoming a solid. And while that doesn't seem too complicated, there's actually a little bit more going on under the covers. You see, the part of the candle that we can see, the part that actually becomes a solid, is only what's visible to the naked eye. Actually, at the microscopic layer, this candle is still hardening and solidifying over time. And the amount of time that that takes depends on the wax. We know that paraffin, which is pretty inert and relatively stable, actually goes pretty quickly from a liquid to almost a 95 plus percent solid. Whereas vegetable oil waxes like soy take a lot longer to cure. And the reason for this is the unstable nature of soy wax and all vegetable waxes in general. You see, they come from hydrogenated vegetable oil and that composition is naturally a little unstable and it takes a little time and it's polymorphic. And polymorphic just means that it forms crystals and these crystals form irregularly in response to time and temperature. And while there's a lot we can do as candle makers to try to prevent this or use it to our advantage, such as in palm wax, there's really nothing we can do in the long haul to make sure that things like frosting don't appear. So the polymorphism actually takes place throughout the entire life of the candle, which means soy wax candles are actually constantly getting harder over time. You'll know this if you've ever wick tested a soy candle early in its life and then revisited it several months later to find that your wick's actually too small. So the second part of candle curing is the part that's a little more obvious and that more people care about, and that's getting the fragrance oil to bind with the wax. See, what's interesting is that fragrance oil and wax actually don't chemically combine. Yes, we mix them and you can't see them different the way that you can with oil and water, but actually on a chemical layer, wax plus fragrance oil yields wax plus fragrance oil. It's still a liquid, it's still its own entity. So what's actually going on? Well, think about wax. When it's a liquid and it's hot, it actually expands, it takes up more space. And as it cools, candle makers kind of hack wax by adding fragrance oil so that as the wax cools, it actually traps that fragrance oil inside of its solid matrix. And going back to the first part of candle curing, that is cooling, actually as the candle hardens, that fragrance oil is pushed in and spread out throughout the candle. Now this doesn't mean that fragrance oil is all located in one spot or that it's not dispersed between the candle right away. This is why when you burn a candle after 24 hours, no matter what wax type, you can get a hot throw because the fragrance oil is there. But the question is, how long does it take for that fragrance oil to appropriately disperse throughout the candle so that you get the even hot throw performance throughout the life of the candle? And that's the controversial part of candle curing, if there is a controversial part is how do we judge the performance of a candle? Well, there's two ways we can judge a candle performance, and the first is the hot throw, the scent. Does it smell good? And a lot of people judge this, how long should I cure, based on how strong it smells, and that's not a bad idea. Naturally, we want our candles to smell. That's a big part of the performance criteria. But what I think a lot of people miss is that this length of time that the candle may need, depending on the wax, will actually affect the wick test. Now a soy wax candle scientifically gets harder over time. Give it enough time and it may actually be too hard for the wick that we chose at the beginning. And this is why it's so important to wait one to two weeks for soy wax candles because we know that the substantial part of that solidification occurs somewhere between one and two weeks. Now you literally need a degree in organic chemistry in order to understand exactly what's happening at the microscopic layer. Not only that, you need to have a list of all the ingredients in the wax, the fragrance oil, and any additives that the commercial manufacturer may have put in it. 
And that's what makes this also so complicated is there's a lot of question marks around what's going on microscopically. So the ultimate question answered, does candle curing matter? The answer is absolutely yes. It depends on what criteria you're going for. Do you want a strong scent throw early on in the life of the candle? Or do you care more about the safety and the burn test? Now most candle makers would say, yes, a safe candle is always better, but a safe candle that you can't smell is kind of worthless also. But some other things to consider with candle curing are that the customers that are gonna burn these, they're not gonna burn them within the first 24 hours. In fact, it could be months before they actually burn it. In which case, if you're building a candle to give to somebody and you expect it to be a while, maybe that's the better place to test it anyways. It's all about overcoming this impatience that we have as candle makers to have all the answers as soon as we can. And the answer to that is simple. Just pour candles every day. Then you'll always have something to burn every single day. But I'm joking. In reality, candle curing is important because it's important that we develop safe candles. The last thing I'll say about it is there's a lot of candle makers who make soy wax candles that get no throw within the first two to three days of making the candle. Just give that candle a little more time. As those polymorphic crystals form and that fragrance oil kind of disperses and the wax hardens into something that the wick is capable of throwing, you may actually get a pleasant or really strong hot throw. So don't worry if you don't get a hot throw so early in your candle life. Give it time, especially if it's a vegetable wax. Now paraffin on the other hand, you don't have to wait that long. Most paraffin is completely solid and ready within the first 24 to 48 hours. If you found this helpful, like and subscribe. I've left some links to the blog below if you wanna read more about curing or if you're curious about anything else candle making related, check it out. I hope you have a great day, take care.